Our next speaker, Alessandro Petroni, from our gold member Red Hat and a fellow Italian. Uh, he leads the business and technology strategy to accelerate the adoption of Red Hat open source technologies in the financial services and fintech industry. Additionally, he leads Red Hat in assisting banks and other financial firms to go in the go-to cloud journey. Today, he'll be, take, he'll be talking about how quickly you can deliver modern banking products and services with modularity in, en in the enterprise open source way. Please welcome Alessandro Petroni from Red Hat. Good day. We are here to discuss how can we modernize banks using a modular approach in the open source way. My name is Alessandro Petroni and I lead the strategy for financial services at Red Hat. I'd like to introduce this topic to you and also an experience that we had at Red Hat and other partners in the banking industry, how to tackle this quite difficult problem. So while we are approaching this concept of modularization, if we take an X-ray of the application portfolio in a bank, it's quite complex. We have probably in the range of 10,000 type of different application, highly interconnected with spaghetti integration, 100,000 plus databases where data are difficult to uh, be fetched and reused across the, the, the firm. And also the, the granularity, how these interfaces between applications being developed over the years is not consistent and is not granular at the same level. As the banking industry has been working for the past decade to formulate the business framework from a functional perspective or business capability of the part of the bank, coming out with a blueprint which defines modules that can be eventually reused, recomposed to create business applications. But why are we talking about modules? We've been using modules since ever in the industry, even though we have, we've been using in a different form and shapes. Why? because we didn't adhere to one framework or business framework, technology framework altogether. That's the opportunity here to work collaboratively, to work at the parts and also at the assembly of the solution in order to better provide services to the associate in the bank and also, of course, the customers. The modules are essentially common languages to define boundaries of roles and responsibilities and liabilities, operationally speaking, and then are also um, a particular type of definition of how to access such capability in form of, for example, of open APIs, and furthermore, in a more modern architecture of open eventing, where information flows from inside the bank to outside the bank, from the customer that are behaving and engaging with the bank and other constituencies, and also inside, to detect patterns. So the integration comes in much more loosely coupled way and eventually all the business functions are somehow listening to what is happening and they can react to re-engage further, for example, the customer. And the certification and the quality of such componentry and the specification are important to create this kind of modular solutioning. Without the ecosystem participation, of course, is not possible because the part becomes just basically produced by one and only one um, producer, maybe the bank itself, which doesn't scale. We have been using services in banking for quite a while. AMQP is a technology standard that has actually been built by JP Morgan and eventually open source with the help of Red Hat but also other standard in the business like FIX for a brokerage and the trading in the FX industry, ISO 222 for payments, down to FDX for customer consent, FDC3, the very standard that we have been creating here at Finos for business in, for desktop interoperability on the trading floor, and also frameworks like the Business Industry Association Network buy-in has created with the banks in the past 10 years a business framework to define the partition of the bank. But while we're talking about modules, if you take solutions, there seems to be in different domains that could be a loan origination, 
versus an e-wallet procurement, if you dig inside, there are certain capabilities and functions that are all basically the very same. We need to we need to work with the product category or directory, and also we need to deploy the loan or the e-wallet itself, meaning we need to uh, get the loan to the customer or we need to install the e-wallet into the customer's cell phone to start, uh, for example, um, making a payment. Open source here comes into many layers. So the business layers where companies and partners can build capabilities that stick to the standard and can eventually be plugged into the solution at the bank, but also the open source framework itself, how these components connect, how they are described, how they are looked after, where to find them is very important. And it is important that this framework remains open because it's like the lattice, the framework for the interconnectivity between the players. If we go down into stack, into the technologies where such components are operated, are deployed, are developed. We recognize, of course, open source, starting with languages, with Java, with uh, Kafka for streaming, for example, and moreover, down in the infrastructure, the, the de facto frameworks, uh, standard, uh, like Linux, and now, moreover, the cloud world, the Kubernetes framework, which is common to every industry and every, um, and every bank. But why is important this component mindset? Uh, the idea is that if there is a pool of suppliers that adhere to certain specification, I can have a choice who to shop with. And moreover, I can always decide to either shop or build or rent the capability elsewhere. So the opportunity here to have a collaboration between fintech and banks is kind of clear, but it's very well defined given specific business function. Moreover, from a technology perspective, innovation, every function can be implemented in many different ways. That does not imply that this function is changing the way it's being consumed by other because the interface is stable. So we might see technology that are connected to legacy mainframe, or maybe using very new technology in the hardware space like accelerator, like GPUs, or maybe even quantum compute for new risk calculation or whatever else. And applications that are not even part of the solution deployed at the bank because are consumed as a service over the cloud, like could be Salesforce or ServiceNow of the likes. But the best way to explain is to lead it by example and creating a proof of concept. So that's what we've done here at Red Hat with the participation of few banks and also FinTech. We'll build collaboratively one example. We took a process we deemed was important, like an e-wallet procurement for a customer wanted to pay using the phone and not cash, which is kind of important during COVID. And so the solution ended up to be uh, composed by four business functions, which are depicted here. And eventually, by orchestrating those functions, we created the solution at the end, the aggregation, by using um, some web technology. This was important to understand the effort to build application using this capability in a modular fashion. And here is an opportunity to work uh, a little much wider scope in the com in the, at the community level. It is clear that wide problem in the world like, for example, disaster management for, um, for natural disaster is a quite complex business solution that also is the correlation between different, different business providers, the bank, maybe a retailer, an insurance company, even the government itself that comes in the form of regulation and also subsidy to the family that are impacted by a disaster. We model all this using this business uh, architecture methodologies, one by one we selected all the capability needed to understand the various phases of uh, the recovery, going from you know, an immediate response of the disaster all the way down to re-establishing the access where we focused on later on, and all the way back to the new normal after the disaster is gone. How is it possible? Well, first you look at the model from a business perspective, you dissect in the capabilities, you create the various use cases that you want to accomplish, and eventually you, given the use case, you select the business capability, 
And now you start looking at the choreography of the business capability, and eventually you lead to defining how um, people can start collaborating because the interfaces between the different components are very clear. And the case that we have shown is working with the fintech, we were mimicking the bank side, and the other team was working as a fintech side. And we were essentially only talking about this business capability and exchanges, and eventually were, were off doing their own implementation independently. And then we met again at the interface level and recombined all together, uh, combine a quite compelling application. The idea then was to describe what has happened. We have been able to create an experience that goes from formulating the business scenario with business analyst and business uh, practitioner down to a technology and business architecture that is eventually translated into component and microservices, how to connect them, how to build them, and eventually how to deploy them into maybe a construct of a cloud. So we use uh, Kubernetes, OpenShift, Red Hat, which is the implementation in the enterprise, and eventually we ran this application in production using different clouds and we succeeded doing so. Just to recap uh, why we should collaborate. Of course, you know, we collaborate because we want to scale faster. The resolution of problem might be bigger than the boundary of the bank itself or the fintech. And supporting the standardization, standardization and open APIs increases consistency between the ecosystem of the industry player to build together. We also reduce the risk because having more people supplying capability and consuming capability, the overall reliability is augmented because we don't depend on the few, but we have a network of support. And of course, more important, we continuously improve using the open source fit up loop to generate new ideas and improve constantly with requirements and implementation. And moreover, I would say, because we would like to have more fun, working in a community is really awesome. With that, I'd like to conclude seeing how, you can, how can you work with us? Well, you know, you can call Red Hat, you can call Finos, you can also, moreover, contribute your piece, your idea. There are many ways to contribute. And everything, since everything and everybody is really uh, important for us and everything matters. And eventually, more important, share your ideas, write, blog, contribute with your code, with your artifact, or whatever you feel able to um, consume and uh, contribute. And with this, I'd like to thank you very much for your time, and I hope you'll join this beautiful conference.